From OAS, based in Bergen, Norway, is the leading supplier of cargo pumping systems to the tanker market. In this video, we will highlight correct operation during loading, cargo heating, unloading, stripping, and tank cleaning. Purge the cofferdams of all cargo pumps shortly before loading. Record the results. Start the loading slowly through the drop line only with the cargo valve partly open. When the pipeline is filled up, open the valve 100%. When the cargo is above the cargo pump's impeller, cargo valve may be open for loading through the pump. Start the ballast pumps when emptying the ballast tanks through gravitation are no longer possible. Check ballast pump cofferdam condition by monitoring level in header tank during operation. Remember to slow down the ballast pump at the end of the deballasting and when the priming on light is illuminated. Remember to drain the cargo line after loading. Heating specifications depends on type of cargo and charter's requirement. When the ship is equipped with Framo deck mounted heaters and the cargo requires heating, use the following procedure. Purge the cofferdam and record the result. Open the valves and the spectacle flanges in the cargo circulation line in front and after the heater. Start required numbers of power packs, set system pressure to minimum, approximately 70 bar. Start the first pump and let it run with hydraulic motor pressure at 50 to 70 bar for one minute. Set handle to maximum position.
Drain the heating medium pipes. Open the steam heating medium. Adjust the heating flow until suitable temperature increase across the heater is achieved. An IR thermometer is supplied by Framo to be used for measuring the temperature increase on the heater's inlet and outlet pipe surfaces. Close the steam inlet valve and run the cargo pump for 10 minutes before stopping the pump. Close the cargo valves and remember to drain the deck heater back to the cargo tank. Also close the spectacle flanges if the cargo heaters are not to be used for some time. Purge the cofferdam and record the result. If the outside air temperature is below 20 degrees Celsius, start one power pack and open the heating valve to create circulation in the hydraulic deck lines. Remember that the maximum hydraulic system pressure during this operation is 100 bar. Continue heating until the temperature is approximately 30 degrees Celsius. Connect the cargo manifold. Cargo samplings to be done according to charterer's requirement. Purge the cofferdam and record the result. Start a power pack and increase the hydraulic system pressure to approximately 130 bar. Start a cargo pump and increase the hydraulic pressure to approximately 50 bar. Let it run against closed cargo valve for one minute. Increase the cargo pressure above the shoreline pressure and open the cargo valve. Increase hydraulic system pressure as required. Increase the pump speed until maximum discharge rate allowed is obtained. Start another power pack if necessary. Remember to bypass ballast pumps when ballasting through gravitation. Start the ballast pumps when this is no longer possible. Follow the same procedure for the next parcel. Remember that hydraulic system pressure should be maximum 20 bar above the highest consumer pressure. Parallel pumping is when we are pumping with several pumps into a common shoreline. Calculate the required number of power packs by using the technical data from the instruction manual and start the power packs.
increase the hydraulic system pressure to approximately 130 bar. Start the cargo pumps one by one and keep them running at 50 bar for one minute. Increase pump's discharge pressure above the manifold pressure and open the cargo valve. Follow the same procedure for the other pumps. Increase the hydraulic pressure for each pump to maximum, slowly, watching the manifold pressure carefully. When all cargo pumps are maxed out, the total capacity can be increased by raising the hydraulic system pressure from 130 bar until maximum allowed manifold pressure is achieved. Start additional power pack if necessary. Remember to stop some of the power packs at the end of the discharging when the hydraulic oil consumption has decreased. If a problem occurs with one of the switches, which causes shutdown to the entire system, you can use mode one on the emergency panel, located inside the main panel in the CCR to avoid any delay in the cargo operation. This only after verifying 100% of the problem is caused by a defective switch. Reduce the cargo pump's capacity at the end of the discharge or when any abnormal vibration is observed. We recommend the following stripping procedure. Run the cargo pump at reduced speed until the cargo tank is completely empty and the pump is losing suction. Close the cargo valve and stop the pump. Open local control valve. Put the control levers in the cargo control room to maximum for the pumps to be stripped to allow local stripping from deck side. Empty the cargo deck line to one of the other cargo tanks with the same cargo or ashore to create space for stripping the pump. Connect the stripping medium hose. Start the cargo pump locally and increase the hydraulic pressure to approximately 80 bar. Open stripping valve and stripping medium valve. The stripping medium is now pushing the cargo down towards the impeller, into the stripping pipe, up through the open stripping valve, and into the cargo deck line. Continue stripping until the pump loses suction or torque, indicated by speed increase or loss of hydraulic pressure. Close the stripping valve. Close the stripping medium valve and stop the cargo pump. Repeat the stripping sequence if necessary. Remember to purge the pump's cofferdam immediately after the stripping is finished to avoid any clogging of the cofferdam if carrying high viscous cargoes. To avoid dry running of the cargo pump and at the same time keep a dry tank top, try to balance the capacity of the tank cleaning machine and the pump. Adjust the pump speed locally if hunting is observed during tank cleaning.
Remember to open the stripping valve to flush the stripping line during the cleaning process. If seawater has been used for tank cleaning, the cargo tank must be flushed with fresh water at the end to remove all chlorides to avoid pittings. For longer ballast voyages, the pump suction well must be emptied for washing water to prevent galvanic corrosion in the suction well. By following the instructions in this video, you will have safe operation, save energy during discharging, have less slop after stripping, and less wear and tear during tank cleaning. In other words, reduce cost of operation and less maintenance.